Welcome to the Revenge Story Times channel. That evening, I was welcomed in a way I hadn't expected. The house was quiet, and neither my wife Helen nor my children were in sight. Helen and I, Mike Lewis, have been married for 11 years. Seeing how quiet the house was, I noticed a note on the table, Mike, I'm sorry I can't tell you this in person, but I'm too much of a coward to face you. I've met someone else and fallen in love. The kids are with me and safe. The divorce papers are in the envelope under this note. As you can see, I'm not asking for anything, Helen. Needless to say, within minutes, my day and my life fell apart. I stormed around the kitchen, cursing as I looked through the divorce papers and finally collapsed into a chair. Helen was leaving me the house and all our money, taking only clothes for herself and the kids, plus their toys. The point that really made me angry was the last one, Helen wanted me to sign the papers allowing her new man to adopt my children. As if that was ever going to happen. At least I learned who Helen left me for, Henry Carslake. I called my soon-to-be ex-wife. Hello, Mike. To hell with hello, Mike. What the hell is going on, Helen? As I already said in my note, I met someone else and fell in love with him. Yes, sure. Nobody just leaves a marriage and sleeps with a guy out of the blue. At least this tells me you two have been having sex. I just hope it wasn't in our bed. Please stop swearing and behave civilly, Helen replied. Civil to hell with civility, you traitor. You can get your divorce and stay with that jerk, but I'm not giving my kids up for adoption. Tell Mr. Big Shot he can go to hell. I slammed the phone down. After taking a shower and changing clothes, I went out to grab a bite to eat as cooking in my mood wasn't an option. The food was decent, and afterward, I decided to stop by a bar and have a few drinks. Considering that today had been a total disaster, I figured I deserved it. The man my wife left me for was the owner of the construction company Carslake. I had done some work for his company in the past, but now everything was about to change. At the bar, I was spotted by my friend Paul. I don't see you here often, Mike. Did you manage to escape the family for the evening? Something like that, Paul. I came home to an empty house and a packet of divorce papers. Helen is divorcing you? Damn, I didn't see that coming. Neither did I, Paul. Neither did I. She moved in with Henry Carslake. What? You mean Henry Carslake from Carslake Construction? Yeah, that's the one. I guess she fell in love with him. What are you going to do, Mike? I'll give her the divorce. She doesn't want anything from me, so I'll sign the papers and be rid of her. There was another form she wanted me to sign, but I already threw it in the trash. What form? Paul asked. She wants me to give up the kids for adoption to him. That's never going to happen in this lifetime. Paul shook his head in disgust. One thing's for sure, Carslake can kiss my ass. I was supposed to start working for him on Monday. Screw that. I'll find another job. I signed the divorce papers. The adoption form for my kids ended up in the trash, where it belonged. Helen tried to plead with me, but I didn't give in. In the end, she gave up. At the time of the divorce, Chloe was 10, and Lee was 8 years old. I wanted to get revenge on Carslake, but I didn't want to end up in jail because of it. I never showed up for work on Monday, and strangely, no one followed up to make me complete the job. Part of my revenge on Carslake happened without me even having to do anything. It came about as a result of my conversation with Paul. When word got out about what happened, most local contractors refused to work with Carslake Construction. They realized he had wronged me, and as payback, they refused to take on his projects. Of course, Old Henry found other contractors, but they were cowboys, and the quality of work suffered. A few times, I was asked to provide quotes for jobs, but when I found out it was for Carslake, I didn't even bother sending the quotes. Six months later, my divorce was finalized. Three months after that, Helen and the jerk got married. I took the kids for a week while they went on their honeymoon. I didn't do it to help them, 
I just figured a week was better than the weekends I was getting now. What really pissed me off was a question from my daughter, Chloe, Dad, why did you send us to live with Mom and Henry? What? I didn't send you. Your mother took you because she doesn't love me anymore. If it were up to me, you could have stayed here, I replied, assuring Chloe that this wasn't my decision. I was planning to have a talk with Helen about it when Helen rang the doorbell to pick up the kids. She came in, all hands and smiling. Her smile vanished when I started talking to her. Stop lying and talking nonsense, Helen. From now on, tell the kids the truth. If you don't, I will. They now know that I never asked you to take them. If I could, I would fight for custody tomorrow. Helen left in anger. Life as a single man felt strange after being married for so long. Some of my friends tried to set me up on dates, but honestly, I wasn't in the mood to meet anyone. I wanted sex but not the dating part. Little did I know, my life was about to change again. My neighbors were Gary and Emily. They moved in right after Helen left me. Their house was a good deal for them since it needed a lot of work. Emily worked as a secretary, and Gary had recently left the army. We got along well, and they seemed like a nice couple. When we ran into each other, they would chat with me. Then tragedy struck when Gary collapsed at work. Paramedics and a doctor arrived within 10 minutes, but Gary was pronounced dead at the scene. The autopsy revealed that he had died from a subdural hematoma. Emily was devastated and left all alone. I offered her my friendship and support. Gary's parents had passed away, and Emily's parents were on vacation in Europe. Not wanting to leave her alone, I walked her to my house and poured us both a drink. I listened as Emily cried and talked about her future plans. Eventually, she broke down and fell asleep on my couch. I covered her with a blanket and slept in the armchair, just in case she woke up during the night. The next morning, Emily was leaving just as Helen was dropping off the kids. Glad to see you're not wasting any time, Mike, Helen said. Stop it, Helen. The poor woman just lost her husband. Helen looked at me, then turned to talk to the kids. Later that day, I explained to them why Emily was leaving the house. Chloe looked sad, and I don't think Lee fully understood what was going on. Emily asked me to attend Gary's funeral, which I did. In the UK, all mortgage loans must be insured, and luckily, Emily wouldn't be left without means to live. It was a small comfort considering she had lost her husband. Emily's parents returned from Europe, and they both spoke with me after the funeral. I assured them I would look after Emily. Aside from her co-workers, I was her only friend. I offered Emily help with any small tasks that needed to be done, nothing major, just things to keep the house in livable condition. The next time Helen dropped off the kids, she stayed in the car, which was perfectly fine with me as it saved me from having to talk to her. Emily and I spent quite a bit of time together, not as a couple but more as friends supporting each other. Almost a year later, Lee was playing in the yard while I was working on my van. I heard voices and turned to see him chatting with Emily. I called out to him and asked him not to be a bother, but then I heard Emily say it was fine, she was just hanging laundry to dry. Emily, do you want to have dinner with us tonight? Lee, you can't just invite people over for dinner like that, I said. She's not just people, she's Emily, he replied. We both stood there laughing. I asked Emily if she'd like to join us for dinner. Yes, I'd love to. That would be great. Thank you. Lee ran off to tell Chloe we had a dinner guest. I apologized for Lee being so forward, but Emily didn't seem to mind. She helped me prepare dinner, and it became clear that she was quite skilled in the kitchen. Afterward, she also helped me clean up and stayed with us for a while before heading home. Thanks for dinner, Mike. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for accepting the invitation, I replied, giving her a hug before she walked to her house. As I heard her door lock behind her, I returned inside. She's really nice, Dad. Is Emily your girlfriend? Chloe asked me with a smile. No, Emily is just a friend and a neighbor, I answered, 
although I couldn't help thinking it wouldn't be so bad if she were my girlfriend. I just kept that thought hidden from the kids. On Sunday afternoon, Helen picked up the kids. I knew they would tell her that Emily had joined us for dinner, and I wasn't wrong. The next time Helen came to pick up the kids, she paid special attention and asked about Emily. Not that it's any of your business, but Emily is just a friend. Besides, you left me for that jerk, so why do you even care about me? I don't care, Mike. I just asked, that's all. Yes, sure. You got what you wanted. What I do is none of your concern. I didn't get everything I wanted, she replied. No, you didn't. And if you mean that I'll let that idiot adopt the kids, forget about it, that's never going to happen. So, get used to it. I was just thinking, no, Helen, you weren't thinking. You left me for the luxurious life with him. If he wants kids, he can have his own. That bastard took my wife and ruined my marriage, and there's no way he's ever going to adopt these kids. Ever. Helen pouted and went home. I smiled, knowing I had gotten under her skin, one year later, I hadn't seen Emily for a few weeks, partly because I had been very busy. My friend Paul was rewiring a house for a young couple and asked me to give a quote for a complete plumbing overhaul. My quote was accepted, and I had a few hectic weeks to get everything finished. While working on the house with Paul, he kept me updated on the local news. Carslake still had to rely on out-of-town specialists, as most of the local guys were still avoiding working for him. When the work on the house was finally finished, I had some time to relax. I decided to invite Emily to dinner. She agreed, and we set a time for Saturday evening. When I went to pick her up, I was taken aback. She was a petite woman, and she had a haircut I liked to call Elvin. The dress she was wearing highlighted her slim figure, and for the first time, I began to feel a physical attraction to her. Dinner went great, and we spent a lot of time talking about our lives in general. Later that evening, I walked Emily to her door. Thank you for a wonderful evening, Mike. I smiled, and before I could say a word, Emily stood on her tiptoes and kissed me, not just a polite peck, but a full kiss. Wow, I didn't expect that, I said, barely catching my breath. Take me out again, and let's see where it leads, Emily smiled, wishing me good night before giving me a polite kiss on the cheek. I asked Emily out again, and this time, we ended up in my bed. She may have been petite, but oh my god, she was a dynamo in bed. I don't think I've ever had such satisfying sex. Emily and I started spending more and more time together, and eventually, she sold her house and moved in with me. The kids thought it was great that I was dating, and I knew they'd tell Helen everything. From what Chloe said, their mother wasn't impressed. Well, she didn't want me, but Emily did. A year after we first slept together, Emily and I got married. When the kids told Helen, she just scoffed and turned away. Emily and I had two children. We named the first boy Gary, and his younger brother Robert. My two older kids were already old enough to drive themselves when they came to visit me, which meant I had even less interaction with Helen, years passed, and one evening, Chloe told me she was getting married. The night before, her boyfriend Josh had proposed to her. As her father, I asked if they needed any help with the wedding expenses. We didn't think we would, but now we do. I looked slightly confused until Chloe explained. Henry said he would cover the wedding costs. We were sitting with him and mom, discussing everything, and then he dropped a bombshell, Henry would cover the expenses only if he got to walk me down the aisle. I told him no way, that's your job. And Henry said that if that's the case, he won't be contributing to the costs. Chloe was clearly upset. I, on the other hand, was furious with Carslake for pulling such a stunt. Emily asked if she could talk to me privately, so we went out to the garden. Mike, we still have some money left in the bank from the sale of my house. Please use it to cover the wedding expenses. Chloe deserves it. I know, Emily, but that's your money. I can't ask you to spend it on Chloe. Yes, you can. Now go and tell that poor girl that we'll cover all the costs. Chloe was overjoyed when I gave her the news. 
We agreed on a budget, and everything they wanted fit within it. The next day, Chloe called me to say that Henry was furious, and apparently, Helen wasn't too happy either. One afternoon, we were sitting in the garden when Lee showed up unexpectedly. He said, I had to leave because I'm tired of hearing mom and Henry argue. Are they still fighting about the wedding? Emily asked. No, it's something else. As far as I can tell, Henry isn't fulfilling his duties in the bedroom. I burst out laughing. It felt satisfying to know that Helen had left me for someone who couldn't deliver when it mattered. The walls in the house are pretty thin, Dad. I can hear them at night. I think Mom is fed up with Henry not being able to perform in bed. We had a good laugh over the situation while sipping our beers. Lee stayed the night with us to avoid the arguments at home. On the day of Chloe and Josh's wedding, Helen was clearly unhappy. Chloe had told her that she and Henry would be seated behind Emily and me. The church service went smoothly. I agreed to let Helen sit at the head table during the reception, but Henry was seated with Emily, Robert, Gary, and Lee. After all the speeches were made, the catering staff cleared a few tables to make room for dancing. Josh and Chloe began the first dance, and then Emily and I, as well as Helen and Henry, joined in. Later in the evening, we stood by the bar while Gary and Robert were sitting with one of Chloe's bridesmaids and her kids. Lee asked Emily if she wanted to dance, and I smiled and said, go ahead. Helen took the opportunity to approach me. It was clear she had been drinking, and I knew this wouldn't end well. Look at them together. She looks young enough to be Lee's girlfriend. Even though Emily was the mother of two boys, she still looked just as she did the day I met her. Helen, on the other hand, hadn't aged well and had gained weight. Her dress had a low cut in the back, showing off a few rolls of fat. Henry was overweight and losing his hair, they were a perfect match. Don't start, Helen. Jealousy doesn't suit you. Besides, we're divorced, so you no longer have the right to comment on my life. Jealous? Jealous of her? Please. She looks like she still needs to be in school. I'm sure she'll be fine once she fills out and gets a bust worth talking about. Don't talk about my wife like that. For your information, Emily is more of a woman than you ever were. Helen looked at me, shocked. Ask yourself, Helen, when was the last time you had good sex? Actually, when was the last time you had sex at all? I paused for a moment. Well, I had amazing sex last night, and you know what? I might have even more amazing sex tonight. Helen stood there stunned as Henry joined us. You see, Helen, when you left me, you thought you were trading up for something better. Maybe that was true, or maybe it wasn't. As for me, I just moved on. I have my own life now, a wife who loves me for who I am, two wonderful children in addition to the two I already had. Life is as good as it could possibly be for me. Can you say the same? I walked away, leaving the two of them standing there like goldfish out of water. Emily and I danced to the slow music while Lee was pulled onto the dance floor by one of the bridesmaids. What was that at the bar? Emily whispered as we danced. Kiss me, and I'll tell you later, I replied. We kissed, and I knew Helen was watching us. When we broke the kiss, I smiled at Helen, and she turned away, ordering another drink. Oh yes, I had definitely moved on. Looking at what I had then and what I have now, I'd say I traded up too. Thank you for listening until the end. See you in the next episode of Revenge Story Times. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Goodbye.